Well, we're back. Body shaming does not just impact adults. Children as young as 9 and 10 in some cases are coping with it. And sadly, it's a growing trend, and it, it tends to get worse in the summer months. So here to talk us through this topic is Dana Sheridan. She's a school counselor with the Village School. Good morning. Welcome back. How are you doing? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here for this. Uh, and I guess, do you agree with that summertime? It tends to body shaming or body image things tend to rear their heads during yeah, this time of just year? Yeah, less structure. I feel like more free-for-all in the pantry and uh -huh. things like that. More time where parents aren't monitoring as much of what they eat. I know you've been doing a lot about healthy eating, it seems like, segments yeah. on that. So. And, and what about any, uh, maybe being out at the pool, the beach, uh, bathing suits, things oh, yeah. like that contribute? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Yeah, for adults and for kids. <laughs> so let's talk about children specifically because okay. th that number nine years old stuck yeah. out to me yeah. nine or ten ten you're getting into double digits I see nine I these know. are like bona fide elementary kids I know. how are how is it that an elementary student is worried about their body image at this point well I think there's a lot of factors I mean they say ages six to ten they start worrying about their weight research says so it's very alarming because you know I remember back when I was that age and I'm sure it was a little bit of the same I think we've always had some body shaming um, throughout all of the decades, but um, now it's just heightened because of social media mm -hmm. and all the other things that come into play with that. How do you think social media, maybe more specifically, plays a role and uh, who, who really should be responsible in that case? Well, I think like you were saying, nine to 10, I think that's the time when they're really wanting, you know, a cell phone and technology and they're going on YouTube, but their parents aren't allowing them to have Instagram accounts or TikTok or things like that. So they're still getting exposed to a lot of, unfortunately, the negative aspects that we have out there. Um, social media in particular, it's all filters. I mean, it's such an unattainable goal of what humans look like, a variety of diverse humans. Right. So, you know, looking at that, it's like, well, I don't quite look like that. I'm not perfect, you know, which none of us are. Um, and then I think sports too, we're covering the Olympics, but we still typecast a lot in sports with gymnastics and soccer, and you have to be a certain size or, you know, I played basketball throughout my career and collegiate level, and I wasn't strong enough to be a post, a five, but <laughs> I wasn't fast enough to be a point guard. So it was like, where do I fit? So I remember a little bit of that for myself growing up. Of, Interesting. Where's my, what's my thing? So body image isn't always tied to beauty then. No, no. It's tied to just shapes, everything. Okay, yeah. height, weight, all of the above. Absolutely. And, and I find it interesting too, it is not just girls, despite what some people want to argue, <laughs> boys, you gotta be tough, not worry about you, but this affects all genders. Yeah, and boys, you know, we're really big on soccer. We're an international school at Village, so we're real big into the World Cup. Yeah. So we have a brand new soccer field on our elementary campus, and the kids are intense when they're playing. And a lot of the boys, you hear them afterwards, you know, you weren't fast enough, or you're too slow, and things like that. You're not big enough to guard that person or what have you. Yeah. So you do see it a lot in boys. I think to talk about body shaming, you also tie in eating disorders as well. And they say boys are only 25% of the people identified with an eating disorder. But if you think about it, um, it's usually severe cases that we start to notice because boys, it's you got to be strong. You got to take all the protein mixes mm -hmm. and you got to you know, so, like, the bigger you are, like the you better. It's almost like you don't even know what's happening at the time. Right. And these changes are coming, and the next thing you know, there's a problem. Right. Um, what are some signs, common signs, that a, that a child might be experiencing this, uh, either directly or indirectly, as you mentioned, through the videos and things they're watching? Um, just mainly that social withdrawal, like you're starting to see them retreat, being kind of a little bit different or unsure about eating. You know, we have, we've had a few kids that still, you know, hide behind a mask when they're wanting to eat and things like that, or just don't eat at school, which which is okay if they're eating a healthy breakfast and eating a dinner, but when they're not having both of those, it's very, very hard. So as a school counselor, how do you help them deal? I mean, because they're, they're coming to you during the day and saying, you yeah. know, are they open to talk about it? Do you have to pull it out of them? Um, it, I mean, it depends on the kid. But I mean, at the village school, we do a lot. My role is unique because I'm social emotional strictly. So I do character education, which I'll talk about in a second. But um, I also do individual and group counseling. So with character ed, I think with body shaming, it's all teaching kids the power of words, right? You know, the impact that you have on others and think before you speak. And you know, it's very impactful. We, we've done, I have a peer mediation program. And so I, I train f some fourth graders, select fourth graders to be mini counselors. And then we mediate minor conflicts with peers and body shaming does come up with that. But it's really teaching kids the difference between is it rude, mean, or bullying? 
because a lot of times with parents we'll get the emails and the phone calls of my kid is getting bullied which sometimes they are I mean sometimes it does fall on that and that needs to be handled disciplinary means but sometimes it's just human nature sometimes it's a rude comment or kids being mean so we present to the younger classrooms on that topic um, and then I do a fourth grade female empowerment series in February so we talked a lot about self-compassion, giving yourself grace, yeah. you know, and it was really cool this year because I, I got all the girls, the fourth grade girls' parents to send me videos along with some of my friends and family that I suckered into doing it. But they had to give advice for what they would tell their 10-year-old self. And mm. it was so empowering. What, what kinds of uh, responses did you get? It was so cool. It was so empowering. I mean, I'll speak about my best friend who lives in Dallas, but hers was, she was always super tall. And her video was about, you know, that she was so insecure about being tall from a young age up and now it's become her her thing she walks into a room and she owns a thing so sometimes <laughs> teaching the kids that what makes you unique and maybe that you don't really like it makes you a little bit insecure can become your superpower as you get older yeah. so embrace the difference we talk a lot about diversity at the village school too just because we have kids all over the world sure I but bet that helps right? yeah, yeah but it's like what's your thing like don't be like everybody else what is unique about you mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to look like everybody else. You don't want to wear the same things, talk the same way. Like that's we it try is, to why celebrate that. Why is it so that. hard for us to embrace our uniqueness growing up? It is. It's a challenge it is. for everybody. I, I think. think it's just the overall sense of belonging and connection. We feel like we have to be like I would have to be exactly like you to be friends with you. Right, right. And it's like, but that's not it. You should have a variety of different personalities and friends and take those pieces, you know? Yeah. You don't want somebody who's always gonna tell you what you wanna hear. You wanna have somebody who's gonna challenge you. You mm -hmm. wanna have just, again, a whole variety of people. And, and, and to, to look at someone and find that unique thing and celebrate right. it too, right? Yeah. I mean, that's gotta be important. Oh yeah, so we really try to hype up differences. I mean, you can see me, I'm wearing my Go Love Yourself t-shirt. I wear a lot of sequins and a lot of different My wife things. would love the sequins. <laughs> if she's watching right now, yeah. it's, it's, it's super shiny. But yeah. I, I love shiny things and I'm quite a character, but that's me, right? And I do have some kids that come up and they're like, oh, my mom would never wear that. You're so brave. And I think about that and I'm like, but brave's not the right word because that's me. Like, I shouldn't have to be brave to be me. Right. It should be easier. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, uh, back to the idea of, of, of body shaming mm -hmm. and what parents can do. Because yeah. I feel like there's a fine line between saying, okay, I, I want my child to eat healthy, so yeah. I don't want them to eat that bad thing, but maybe what I'm saying is somehow body shaming. I'm saying, you don't want to yeah. be fat or you don't want to be this. Right. How can we tread that fine line and be encouraging yeah. without being disruptive or how It is. I mean, I, you're a parent, so I mean, you do find where you're trying to like figure out how to word things because you don't want to shame and you don't want to do different things. So yeah. for parents, I think it's watching yourself. I say that a lot, <laughs> but really you're the model. So if you're on every other fad diet every week, Week and you're kind of weird or when you talk about your own body your your child's looking at that and they're figuring out oh I can't eat that or that'll make me gain weight or oh I'm too skinny I need to do whatever because remember body shaming is both sides overweight and underweight mm, right. so it's every spectrum but just teaching them that they <laughs> they can eat in moderation you know it's not about restriction it's moderation and right. teaching them they can have that ice cream at the end of the day they can't have ice cream all day um, but <laughs> right. as a parent you have to be doing a little bit of that too and showing a, diver a diverse group of characters in books movies and I feel like we're getting better at that nowadays yeah um, but just showing them cool things come in every shape and size well and that's the other thing about yeah. social media there are positives to it I yeah. mean YouTube can be a terrible rabbit hole for someone oh, yeah. to go into and come out thinking all the worst things but it can also be beneficial yeah know that and too, it's so. yeah teaching them assertiveness skills that's probably the number one thing that I have that I talk with parents about is don't always try to clean up for your kid you know they have to be assertive and it goes back to that is it rude mean or bullying if somebody says something rude to you and oftentimes it's one of your good friends you know it might be teasing you're both laughing and then all of a sudden they cross the line right. so you have to teach your kids about boundaries and how to stick up for themselves in a kind but firm way yeah. so you have to be like I didn't you know it was really funny but then you said that and I didn't like that please don't do that again so you're educating them, and then if that person does it again, then it kind of moves down the spectrum of, okay, they knew it hurt you, 
right. so then maybe that would go get a little bit closer to being mean, more mean or bullying. bullying. Sure, yeah. sure. And so, then with friends, you learn to respect each other's boundaries. That's yes. also part of great communication, building relationships. Yeah, right? but we do. We hear that a lot. Yeah. We're all, uh, they're getting bullied, and it's like, but we try to really empower kids. And again, it goes back to that power of words and really educating them. I'm lucky I go into classrooms and I teach character ed. So we've got character traits every month, but really honing in on the impact that you can have with that. It's very, very important. Well, this was a great talk, Dana. Thanks yeah. for coming in today and doing this. Yeah, thank really you so much. It. Dana Sheridan, the school counselor at the Village School. Appreciate your time and good luck to all the families out there. We'll